Today we're going to make this uh, sourdough, sourdough made with white flour, so it's a white sourdough. Um, it has a nice crust on it, hard crust, nice chewy center. You have the big holes that really soak up butter very perfectly. It's great for soup, toast, or what we're going to do tonight, with which is some cheese fondue. So watch along as we make sourdough. So we're going to make sourdough. The dough I use, I started with 830 grams of flour, and to it I'm going to add 15 grams of salt. And I'm going to add the recipe down here, 480 grams of water. And then I'm going to add in ripe sourdough starter. So the starter is actually just flour and water, and I use 100% hydration. So that's one part flour, one part water, one part ripe starter. Um, and the ripe starter, if you have a very active starter and you leave it out on the counter, it's going to be about 12 hours you're going to need to feed it. If you put it in the fridge, you can wait a week. If you have kind of just an active one, you can probably get away with 24 hours. But you want to keep feeding it or rather than just kind of converting all the sugars um, into kind of yeast and growing, it starts making alcohol and you get like a little watery skim on the top. So if it's gone to that, it's gone a little bit too far. So I'm going to add in 340 grams of my rec starter. And what I'm going for is an AR rating of 65%. And what AR is, it's absorption rate ratio. And that is the amount of, that's the percentage of water to flour. So the percentage of water to flour is 65%. And if you're wondering about my math on that, since the 340 grams of ripe sourdough starter is um, a one-to-one -one ratio, I have 170 grams of flour in there, 830 grams of bread flour in here, which makes 1,000 grams, so I have two 500 gram loaves. And then I will have 650 grams of water. Um, and that will equal out to about 65%. So I'll put it on here. And Caleb is in the background of the coffin. He's not feeling too good. We will turn this on and let it mix. And I found that in the past I had a lot of trouble with my sourdough. It didn't rise like I wanted it to. I ended up not mixing it enough. And I will show you what it looks like when your dough is fully mixed. You do a window pane test. You stretch it and it should stretch but not rip and kind of you can see through it and it looks kind of like a window. But uh, when it's mixed to that point, I'll show you what we're looking for. Okay, let's check it and see. Got some oil. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on my fingers just to keep it from sticking. Let's pull some dough up. And this looks just a little bit shaggy, but as we stretch it, it's kind of tearing. That tells me that it's not quite ready. We're going to need, I would guess, about another two or three minutes. I've had this take as long as 45 minutes in this stage. I've had it take as short as 10 minutes, but it'll take a little bit. So I'll give it about another two or three minutes and we'll check again. But it's just about there. This should be ready. Let me get a little bit of oil on my hands. And I will show you what I mean. I'll do it this way. So what we're looking for is we it should, see it's nice and stretchy. As we gently stretch it out, it's stretching out and not tearing. I don't know if you can see right up there, we're just starting to kind of come apart. But getting really thin as we stretch it. So that should be good. That's kind of the, well, it's called the window pane test where you can stretch it out and it gets thin, thin like a window. And when it's like that, we know that the glutens are developed and we'll get those nice big air bubbles that you see in sourdough. 
So now I'm just going to cover this and we'll let it rest. I'm gonna let it double in size like I normally do. This should take anywhere from three hours to four hours. And in three or four hours, we'll come back and I will show you shaping the loaves and putting them into the banditon baskets. Well, my dough is risen and now it's time to shape it and put it into the banditon baskets. This is a banditon basket. It's a basket made out of heaney, and it, since this is such a soft dough, it helps let the dough have a shape, and also the little ridges and stuff in here that will be transferred to the bread, and it gives it kind of a nice design while keeping the bread from collapsing on itself. So first, I want to flour these. So the flour is gonna act as kind of our release agent um, spray Teflon, whatever you want to call it, to allow us to dump the bread out and have it not stick to the basket. Also the flour on the top is going to add kind of some nice visual appeal. So I like to heavily flour the baskets because the dough is a little sticky. We'll get both of these floured, and we're going to turn the dough out. We're going to divide it in half, and we will shape it into a loaf. In the shaping of the loaf, we want to be uh, very careful and particular on, because sourdough gets a lot of its shape and a lot of the big airy texture based on how you have stretched the top. Uh, think of it like a balloon. Um, that tightness of the top of the balloon, which is, which is what helps it to blow up and get bigger. If you don't stretch the top enough, it'll just kind of flatten out and won't hold its shape. But since we developed our glutens, remember we uh, did the window pane check and it looked like a window pane. Since the gluten is fully developed, we're going to be able to stretch the top and it'll be tight on the top and tight on the bottom and it'll help to be that balloon that'll blow up. So. More flour. Dump this out. We'll divide it. And then I'm going to just kind of pull the edges into the middle. And one thing you're going to want to be careful of is big air pockets. And so I'm stretching the top. I'm putting my hands like this and putting over and stretching. And I'll just get that stretched out. Like I got a bigger pocket here. If there's an air pocket, just pop it. That's feeling pretty tight. This is going to be the bottom of our loaf. You can see it's not as clean looking, and that's fine. It'll be on the bottom. Also, as I'm stretching it, I'm looking for the shape to make sure it's staying round. That one done. A little flour on the top, and put the top side down in the bowl. Cover it with a little flour, and I'll put it off to the side by the oven because after we have these shaped, we want to preheat our oven, and we're going to cook it using a Dutch oven. So cooking it with the Dutch oven, I want to have my Dutch oven in the oven when I turn it on, so the Dutch oven will be hot. The reason for that is the cold Dutch oven won't allow it to cook properly because we're trying to get all the heat inside there. Lower that side down. Lower on top of it. So as you can see, I'm just covering it to kind of keep it getting too dried out. Then 
Um, I'll move the camera over and I can show you when I'm doing the oven to cook it. But this will be ready to put in there. We're going to let it rise. Um, not quite until double, but till it starts kind of getting bigger. Um, that'll be about 30 or 45 minutes. Then we'll bake it. So what I was talking about with the pizza stones is if you use a pizza stone, use a cast iron pan like this, and you'll put it in the very bottom of your oven and you'll pour boiling water into it. If you use that method, I would wear a really long um, kitchen gloves or something or some welding gloves because the steam will burn you and it will hurt if you get it on you. But I like to use these Dutch ovens and it has a flat lid and rather than put it in like a lot of people, I like to turn it upside down because we're going to cook it and then we're going to leave, remove the lid halfway through. But putting a loaf of bread onto the pan like this is much easier than trying to drop it down into here and not burn yourself. So I will put these in the oven. And we will turn it on to bake at 450 degrees. We'll let this preheat while our loaves rise. And then when the loaves are risen, we will score the top and we'll put it in the oven. The bread has risen enough. So now I'm going to turn it off, turn it out onto a piece of parchment paper. I'll score the top with my bread link and then we'll put it in the oven. So let's get these turned out. I'll put my hand on the bottom to catch the loaf and then lightly tip it out and set it down. Same thing with this one, lightly tip it out. And set it down and then I'll use the bread lane to Score my loaf. And we are going to bake this for 25 minutes with the lid on. And that lid on is going to hold the steam in, and that's going to help it rise up and get real big. And then 15 minutes, well, 10 to 15 minutes, I'll check it with the lid off. So now for the fun and exciting part. Pull these out. See, that is smoking hot. I'll grab the ends of the parchment paper to help me get it in there. Cover that up. Scoot it back, and this one, I can remove the lid. that into the oven. I'll set our timer for 25 minutes. In 25 minutes, I'll take the lid off and we'll let it cook a little bit more. Okay, that's 25 minutes. So it's time to take the lids off the sourdough. And this time we can see how much they've risen. Pull this out. steam did and how those rose made our, our loaves rise up so I'll put it back in there set the timer for another 15 minutes and in 15 minutes it'll be ready to take out that's our timer and time to pull them out turn that off Completely before you slice them. 